Hi everybody, this is Dr. Dan, and I'm putting together a series of videos to help you use the Elvis tools um, so that we can analyze and troubleshoot our circuits in lab. And so in a previous video, I showed you how to use the digital multimeter. In this video, I'm going to start talking about the function generator and the oscilloscope. Um, these kind of go hand in hand because you can use the function generator to make a signal, um, but unless you have this oscilloscope, you can't really see the signal. Um, so it's easy to make a signal with the function generator. You just bring it up. Uh, you set the frequency you want, you set the amplitude you want, you press run, and it tells you, okay, I'm creating a 100 hertz signal. Now, the way I have this wired on my Elvis board, as I have a picture of that, is I just have the, this is hard to see, but that's F-Gen. I have a wire from F-Gen to AI0+, plus, and then I have the AI0- minus just into the AI ground. Okay, and so it's very simple to wire up. And now I can look at what that is using the oscilloscope, and so if I choose, instead of scope channel zero, which is just one of the banana ports on the Elvis board, we want to use AI zero, and I can hit run. And so you can see our 100 hertz signal. All right, so we can. there's a couple things we can set about the oscilloscope. So right now, it's saying the scale is one volt. And so if I stop this, and you can see we're inputting a one volt peak to peak scale. And so you can see it goes from about the middle there to the middle there. So yes, each of these squares is one volt high. Each of these squares horizontally is five milliseconds wide. And so five milliseconds is pretty good to see, to visualize this uh, 100 hertz signal. Um, but you might want to zoom in to make sure you get a better representation. You can use the auto scale to do that. And so it set, when I auto scaled, it set each square to 200 millivolts to kind of let us see the, the signal a little better. Um, but we're more interested in seeing the output of our signals, like what happens after it goes through a circuit. So I also built a high pass filter on the Elvis board and I put the output of the high pass filter into AI1. This oscilloscope actually has two channels working, right? Right now we're just looking at channel zero. I can set up channel one to AI1. Uh, you do have to make sure you hit this enable button or it won't do it. And so it's showing us a signal. Now it looks like the signal is different, um, but it's because the scales are different. So you can hit auto scale and it will scale them the same. And so this is at 100 hertz. I mean, the signals are essentially the same, right? Because this is a high pass filter and 100 hertz is, I mean, it depends on the filter, but it's fairly high frequency, right? And so this filter is not doing anything to 100 hertz. So if I go over here down to and lower the frequency, you know, I can even type in just one hertz. Let's look at one hertz. Okay, and we can see the signals are different. So this is where I'd have to change the time division, I think, to see the signal a little better. All right, so we can see now at one hertz, the signal is being attenuated, right? And we also see the phase shift in there that results as a part of the filter. We can definitely see that the signal is being filtered at lower frequencies. Now, one of the other cool things we could go ahead and look at is remember I told you we run a high pass filter because we also want to make sure we remove all DC offset from our signal, right? So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and put in a one volt DC offset into our function generator. Okay, and so what happens is you see that our original signal is offset by one volt, but our filter signal now is still back around zero. So that's a really cool demonstration of how this filter actually removes that um, DC offset from the signal. Okay, we have a tuple, couple other tools we can use to evaluate our signal and our filter as well. So I'm gonna show you those. I'm gonna stop both of these for now. Uh, I'm gonna set this DC offset back down to zero. We're done with the oscilloscope. We're going to need the function generator a little bit. But one of the other tools that is useful is this dynamic signal analyzer. And that helps us, number one, we can view the signal in here, right, if we're just looking at it. But it also shows us the frequency component of what's going on in the signal um, in this power spectral density plot. And so I can show you how that works, right? Again, we can put in, I'll put in a 50 hertz signal. Uh, for instance, at volt at one peak. Okay, and so again, we're going to need to set our input so we're making sure we're getting the right inputs. And so again, I have the function generator wired into AI0. Um, the other thing we need to do is we want to set up our frequencies. We're not interested um, all the way out to, for our projects, all the way out to 40,000 hertz, right? So, I, you know, if I try to set this at 100 hertz, it doesn't let me. It goes down to 405. And so really you can only have one line per hertz. And so the lowest we can actually have is about 200. It makes us go to 205 for some reason. But so I can set that resolution to 200 lines 
and, and I can see the first 200 hertz, which is a good representation of what we're interested in for our projects. Right, so now I can go ahead and run a 50 hertz signal. I can go ahead and run our dynamic signal analyzer, and you can see the signal right there, just like we expect. And look at this, it's showing us a perfect peak right at 50 hertz. Okay, and so that is, that is showing us that, okay, that's the frequency content of that signal. And so if I change this to say 20 hertz, so here's what happens, right? Uh, if you had noticed over here, there's this number of averages. And so we're actually averaging the last five signals. And so the signal did change to 20 hertz immediately. Um, but the way this is set up by default, it's, it's sort of averaging out. And so it's making sure we don't like lose um, because we're getting you know certain spikes. And so all of a sudden we see something that's not really there because it's one, one measurement. And so eventually that 50 hertz will go away and the, the, you know, the 20 hertz will be there. I could set this number of averages to one if I just have a pure signal and just want to see it uh, change immediately. But um, that's, that's the way we would see the frequency component in our signal. And so when in lab, when we're especially looking at 60 hertz noise, right, you'll see that peak at 60 hertz. You'll see uh, harmonics of it at 120, 180 hertz. And so there's, those are things to pay attention to, like what are the signals that I want and what are the things I need to filter out of my signal based on what's showing up in the dynamic signal analyzer. Okay, so I'm gonna stop these. The last thing we wanna do is we can use a Bode plot to sort of understand how our filter's working. And for a Bode plot, we don't need either of these things. We just need the Bode plotter tool, uh, which is up here, Bode analyzer. Okay, and so this basically does the same thing we did before when we had the function generator in the oscilloscope. You have a stimulus channel, which in our case, I put the function generator into AI0. Then we have the output of the high pass filter in AI1. And then we could sh tell the frequencies that we want to examine, right? And so we want to probably start pretty low. Um, the one trick is the lower frequency you start, the longer it takes, because it takes a long time to show a low frequency because it's going to take several measurements. Um, so I'm going to go to 0.5 hertz. Will it do that for me now? So it'll do 1 hertz. We certainly don't need to go to 10,000 hertz. I'll go up to 200 hertz again, just so we can see. Um, this is just how many steps per decade. So again, the more you have here, the longer it will take to analyze that. The peak amplitude is the voltage you want to apply. So it's going to, that's where we had that voltage peak to peak in the function generator. And then the other thing is this op amp signal polarity. Um, for our, for my case, where I'm just using a simple passive filter, I, this is I can just leave as normal. But if you're using an inverted active filter, you would set this to inverted so that it gets the phase correct. I mean, if you don't really care about the phase, it's no big deal. But you might as well just set it to inverted if you're using an inverted amplifier. Okay, so I have things set up. I'm going to go ahead and hit run, and it will take some time because it's collecting several measurements at one hertz. Okay, so it plotted that point. Right, so at the higher frequencies, it ends up running faster. Right, and so we can see that this is a great high pass filter, and we can see the cutoff frequency for this thing is minus 3 dB, right, is somewhere in the 1, 2, 3, 4 hertz range. Okay, so that's how you can use these Elvis tools to help you not only plan and design your circuits, but also troubleshoot them. Um, when you're trying to figure out what's going wrong.